Panning and zooming can be tricky. I usually depend on my original camera shooting for panning and zooming, but let's say I have only a static shot of this brook, and I want to add some panning and zooming. I double click the segment, camera, the arrow at the right here, and pan and zoom. First, I check the presets over here. Default means it's going to zoom in a little bit. Clicking no preset means it won't move at all. Big zoom, it zooms in a lot. Pan across, it pans across. Pan down, it pans down. And pan corners, it does this. which is a nice effect. Now the good thing about these preset choices over here is that they automatically set your parameters in good spots so that you don't have to do a dozen trial and error attempts making sure you get what you want yet don't go past the edge of the picture. But let's say you do want to set your own parameters. Here I want the scene to zoom in, pan slightly to the right, and then zoom back out. Click here and click No Preset. Notice all the positions are at zero. Make sure the orange diamond is on. It brings up your keyframe icon down here at the left. this white diamond. Here under settings I'm going to put in my own parameters. Your scrubber is here at the beginning. I want the scene to be zoomed in at about this spot. So I move my scrubber to that spot and then go over here. Notice that as soon as I drag or put in a number a white keyframe automatically gets put in here at this spot. I drag the zoom to my preference for the spot. I also want to pan to the right. You can use your arrow keys for fine-tuning. So now that spot is set. I want to maintain that same level of zoom for a few seconds, so I want another keyframe with the same numbers about here. The best way to do that is right-click on the one you have, copy keyframe, right-click the white line at the desired spot, paste keyframe. So now, from here to here, the picture stays at the same zoom level. Since we wanted to zoom back out from this point to the end, we want the end position to be at zero. We can copy the zero keyframe position from the beginning to the end. Or we can move the scrubber to the end and make these numbers all zero. And press enter. That should do it. Let's see what we have. Zoom in. Hold. Zoom out. Note that the picture quality of the eventual export is better than the picture quality of the preview window. Key things to remember. If you put the scrubber anywhere and then change the settings over here, it automatically puts a keyframe in 
where the scrubber is. Positioning the scrubber is key. Besides dragging the line here, you can also change your settings by double clicking to get the number to zero and then entering your desired number with your computer keys and then pressing enter. Note that if you have your scrubber over a keyframe, you can click this white diamond icon and it erases it. If you have the scrubber at any spot without a keyframe and you click the white diamond icon, it puts a keyframe in at that spot, at whatever the settings you set over here. You can also put a keyframe in by right clicking on the white timeline at the desired spot and clicking create keyframe. The keyframes indicate a set spot in your movie line in terms of the zoom level you've set and the location you've set, up, down, left, or right of the screen. And your settings up here at the right show the specific numbers for the spot wherever your scrubber is at the moment, whether on a keyframe or in between keyframes. Note that you can also drag keyframes. So if, for example, you want this scene to zoom in more quickly, you drag this keyframe closer to the first one. The less distance between keyframes, the more quickly the change occurs. The setup for panning and zooming changed a bit around Pinnacle 20 or 21, so if you have Pinnacle 20 or later, you may want to watch Malik Whitaker's tutorial on panning and zooming. In fact, Malik is a great source for all sorts of excellent tutorials on specific Pinnacle Studio topics.